Monetizing Your Brain with Brita Long, Episode 101. Are you ready to make your law firm a profit generating machine that will free up your time and skyrocket your impact? With more than two decades of business growth experience and having proven that you can be successful while prioritizing your family and your impact, introducing the Profit with Law podcast. I am your host, the creator of the firm differentiator 10x effect, Moshe Amsel. Well, hello and welcome to another episode of the Profit with Law podcast. This is another amazing guest stellar interview I'm bringing your way. And my guest today is, as as you've been seeing with the guests that we've been streaming through now in the month of May and June of 2020, if you're listening to this down the road, we're still dealing with the after effects of COVID. And I wanted to find a way to help law firm owners with increasing the revenue without needing to find new clients and decided to introduce you to the idea of information products. So go back to listen to uh, the podcast episode 90, I think it's 96, where I introduce this idea and I explain to you what I'm talking about. And then from there, start listening to each of the episodes. There's a couple of interviews that are not related, but pretty much from there all the way through mid uh, to end of June. Uh, this is the focus of of this podcast, and every single guest episode, every single solo episode is all geared towards that. Uh, we're doing a one day summit uh, packed with information on how uh, to to navigate this journey of adding information products to your law practice, and that's going to be on June fifteenth. So you want to go and sign up for that. At the time of this recording, it's just a wait list, uh, but by the time that you listen to this, it probably will be open for registration, and you'll be able to just sign up. But go to profitwithlaw.com forward slash waitlist, profitwithlaw.com forward slash waitlist, and you can sign up for that one-day summit uh, or to be notified when that one-day summit opens for registration by just going there, putting your name and email address in. So definitely let us know that you're interested so that we can we can make you the first to know that that's open and ready for you to join. Today, my guest is uh, uh, Brita Long, and Brita Long is an a, a ter- attorney uh, who's no longer practicing law. She's pivoted her, her business to something else. She became an author, wrote two books. Her, her most recent book, The Happier Attorney, focused on this idea of flat fee pricing, a flat fee pricing model for the attorney uh, to implement in their law practice. So definitely encourage you to go pick up her book, The Happier Attorney, but sit back and relax and enjoy this conversation that I have with Brita as we navigate this world that she has entered into and what it's been like, what made her decide to uh, leave her law practice and, and go down this road, and what does that mean for you? And what does this have to do with information products? So, Brita, welcome to the show. Thank you. So, Brita, I like to start off with just a little bit about you so that our guests get to know who you are. So if you don't mind, just fill in the backstory. You know, um, how, what kind of attorney were you? How long did you practice law? And what made you decide to become an author and to pivot out of uh, your law practice and into what you're doing now? Uh, Well, I've been practicing since 1997. I was uh, a deputy prosecuting attorney for a few years, and then I opened up my own practice in 2000, Uh, practiced uh, family law for many years, and uh, about four years into that, you started using flat fees, and that made the practice so much better. Uh, But it was still family law, (laughs) and the clients are still the clients. Uh, So about five, six years ago, I started uh, estate planning and still using flat fees. I moved due to family issues and taking care of my father, moved to Texas from Seattle and uh, started writing my first book on dealing with your parents passing away, uh, which worked well with my estate planning. And uh, my father passed away and I really just started writing. And it, I, I made the decision to continue to write and create this course versus starting up a, a whole new practice in Texas. Uh, 
I was pretty much done. I've been doing this a long time and found this new avenue that I loved and decided to um, give this a try. So how how did you get into I mean, let's just talk about your your concept which is you know flat fee billing how did you get into that at yourself like how what introduced you to the idea of doing flat fees and how did you navigate that to uh, to make it something that you feel is an absolute necessity for attorneys to implement in their practice well I was uh, I, I knew that hourly billing wasn't working for me uh, but I didn't know of any other way. But I, I was very tired of chasing after clients for money. I started feeling um, that there was an adversarial relationship with my clients. Even when clients would first come in, I would be evaluating whether I thought they could pay me or not. And I was always one step behind. <laughs> uh, it was always, oh, one more client will get me ahead. And I, I was doing the things I, that, that you're taught to do. I, I kept contemporaneous notes religiously. I, my descriptions were amazing. Um, my clients didn't question the bill. They just didn't pay the bill or they paid some of it. And I just always felt like I was behind the eight ball. And I was spending so much time on this billing issue. And uh, it, it was really causing a lot of anxiety, which most attorneys have anxiety issues, and this was not helping. And I just wanted to go to work, do a great job, and get paid. And I remember that uh, when I was a prosecuting attorney, criminal attorneys all used flat fees. And I thought, well, there's got to be a way. I mean, we're pretty, pretty smart people there's got to be a way to translate that to family law. And I started asking around and everybody thought I was crazy. Everyone who said, you can't do that. You don't know. Uh, you don't know how long it's going to take. You don't know how it's going to be involved. Well, I found uh, an attorney, uh, Mark Chen, out of Jackson, Mississippi, who uh, was very well established, very well respected, and who used flat fees. And he had an ebook on it, and I read the ebook and felt instant relief because there was hope. There was hope that I could do this. And so I used, uh, I, I did what the book told me to do. And over the years, I tweaked it and made it my own. Uh, and it, it takes a while to have the problems come up. And those problems are very, very costly if you don't know about them ahead of time and how to prevent them. So if, if people are trying to do this on their own, uh, they can do it. They're certainly not uh, any less intelligent than I am, but it takes a long time to work out all the kinks unless you're being taught precisely how to do it. So I, I worked out the kinks and uh, never looked back, would never look back from you know. going back to our and what I want to point out is, I mean, there's two, you have two products, right? You have a book that you wrote right. and then you have a course that you sell. And I, I want to, I want to point out that first of all, a book is an information product. It is a, a piece of material that you took your knowledge, you put it into some sort of format that people can buy and you're able to serve many people with the efforts that you place just doing that once. So you wrote the book and now over and over again, people could buy that book, they could read it, they can get the information. And books work play very well when you parlay them into a course. In other words, when people read a book, they understand the concepts of what you're teaching, but often they feel like they need somebody to hold their hand to implement those concepts. And that's where a course or any sort of coaching program can can fill that need and it's not going to be everybody right so you know 10,000 people buy your book maybe only a thousand of them or a hundred of them actually need your help but those hundred people you have to have that next level you know that you can support them with if you really want to uh, effectuate change and, and and help people you know create this difference for themselves it's interesting that you took the the knowledge that you had 
to help other lawyers as opposed to the knowledge that you had in the law to help people navigate those areas of law that you focused on, um, which which is an interesting phenomenon because you're not the only one. And there's, I mean, first of all, practically every um, coach in the the you know practice um, develop you know business development uh, practice management space is an attorney who says, hey, I was successful. Let me show you how I did it. Uh, you know, you're doing it with just one little piece of it, which I think is genius to niche down to that level. Um, but that's really the only example that we have in the legal space to demonstrate what an information product looks like. There's fewer and and even less attorneys right now who are creating products for their ideal clients to to boost who they can reach and the money that they can make off of those people. Uh, so I'm just wondering, I'm, out of curiosity, did that ever cross your mind to take that other, you know, amazing knowledge base that you've amassed over the years with the areas of law that you've practiced to create some sort of information product, book, uh, course, or th things like that to serve that market? Yes. Uh, yes. And uh, I haven't done it yet. <laughs> but um, th This was my priority, quite frankly, because there are so many attorneys out there who are so unhappy uh, to the point of leaving the practice to the point of suicide. And, and I've had personal contact with uh, some people who have gotten in real trouble. I have a good friend whose husband killed himself in his office. And so it was, to me, it was critical to start reaching out to attorneys to, to give a lifeline and I knew that ahead of time, but now that I've worked with attorneys and, and I see behind the, the curtain mm -hmm. uh, and they really share details of their lives, uh, I, I know it's even more critical than I thought. So uh, my focus right now is on attorneys. Let's get that settled. But absolutely, there. the more that I do this work, the more ideas come in, into my head. Uh, my practice area was estate planning and family law. And especially with family law, I, I think that there is such a huge ocean there for products. Um, it's, it, it's not even funny, quite frankly. So, uh, you know, it's, it's interesting because uh, when I talk to family law attorneys, I happen to have a, a, a number of family law attorneys in my uh, higher level coaching program, uh, an even bigger number of family law attorneys in our incubator program. And when I talk to them, they start to like draw these blank faces. Like, wh wh what would I do? How would I position that? Like, what, what does that look like? Can you just throw some of your ideas out there just to start to get our listeners' minds flowing? Like, what are some of the things that, you know, if that was your focus right now, that you would be thinking about putting into, uh, into, into reality as far as, you know, creating some sort of um, informational, educational product out there? Uh, well, the, the first thing that I would say is I'd back up a little bit uh, and if I was talking to an, an attorney who was at all interested, and this is what I tell my students as well, is you, and I have to tell them, you know, 10 times a minute, you have to stop thinking like an attorney. You cannot think like an attorney. You, you've got to shut that part of your brain off because that's not going to work for you uh, because you're going to come up with all the problems and you're going to second guess yourself. So that's number one. Uh, but for family law, I can think of um, a, a information product on how to deal with a narcissist, a narcissist as opposing counsel, uh, a narcissist uh, when, and that would be more for attorneys, but for clients, how to, how to deal with a narcissist on when it, that's your spouse, how to co-parent with a narcissist. Uh, drug and alcohol issues, how, how to get through a divorce when the other side has drug or alcohol issues, because it's a completely different ballgame. You know, all of the normal advice that you would give a client, you kind of have to switch that on, it, on its head. Uh, all of the different stories, 
and cases that you've had, there are other people who have had those cases. They don't know what to do. And quite frankly, there are a lot of, in, in my experience, there are a lot of family law attorneys who do not take a big picture. They just want to get their clients divorced, get uh, the final pleadings done, and be on, on their way. They're not thinking globally. Like they're not thinking, okay, how is this uh, parenting plan or visitation schedule, whatever your state wants to call it, how is that actually going to affect my client on a day-to-day -day basis? What does this provision look like on a Friday exchange at six o'clock versus this provision? And if you could have an information, that, that would be my first thing, is an information product that really works, helps people work through those details so that they maybe they can tell their attorney, maybe not even do it themselves, but know to tell their attorney, okay, I want a parenting plan that has fewer exchanges, uh, less conflict, uh, and, and how to deal with when something comes up. Uh, and a lot of attorneys are, are afraid to have real hard conversations with their clients because they don't want to tick them off. Uh, so you could have an information product that gives uh, stronger advice to clients, <laughs> let's put it that way, where it's not offensive because you're not saying it directly to your client. You can say, oh, this other person, here, you go listen to this, take this little course, and it's somebody else being the bad guy. Explaining what the law is and why. It's endless what you could do. Absolutely. You know, uh, Brita, one of the things that I think is a huge opportunity for family law attorneys, and I've shared this with my clients, and I'm going to share it here publicly, is, you know, uh, and I, I talk about how do you figure out how to position information products, and I tell you to look at your client's journey, like what do they go through from the beginning to the end, and find the gaps where your service is not fulfilling that need. One of the places I can tell you from my own experience, I went through a divorce I'm, I'm married again. I'm very happy today, but um, I went through a divorce and there were a number of things that happened post divorce that I could have really used help with. And it, uh, it is a huge opportunity for you to continue to, to provide a service to your clients when they're done. And normally that would be the end. You never see them again unless they're a repeat offender. Right. And so, they move on their merry way and you never hear from them again and that's the end of the relationship but instead what if you could create a community of divorced parents or you know whatever your target market is for me my example would be divorced parents because that's who i was but in the process of getting divorced i lost my friends mm -hmm. like it wasn't it wasn't on purpose they just didn't know how to navigate talking to me and helping me and supporting me through the process so I ended up very alone in that process and it would have been really, really helpful to have a community where I can talk to other people who are going through a similar thing, where I could share challenges I was having with custody, with dealing with the ex, with, you know, stuff like that, that I don't need to call the, my attorney. I don't need to involve my attorney, but if I was part of a community, you know, so if the, if my attorney had said, here, look, we have this community of divorced parents that can be a huge support for you and you can join it for 27 bucks a month or whatever, you know, 47 bucks a month, whatever it is, it would have been money well spent. And I probably would still be in that today, you know, even though I got married and I, you know, there's, there's always issues that continue to come up throughout, you know, my kids are now 20, uh, oh, they're all having birthdays. Oh my goodness. Turning 21, 19 and 18, you know, the kids from my first marriage, uh, but there's still issues to navigate. Mm -hmm. And and there's issues that come up, you know, like my my ex had dealt with alcoholism post divorce. You know, and I had to navigate that whole that whole issue. So I think that I would have been better at noticing signs. I would have been better at at navigating the situation if I had been in a group where other people had talked about those things, just sharing in other people's experiences. So there's a ton of value you could provide by creating a post service resource that people can be in and if you create it as a subscription model then then the more people you put in there the more that generates and it just picks up steam over time um but that's a, another great idea to think about in your practice it doesn't have to be family law how can i continue to serve people you know you do bankruptcy 
there's a there's a huge thing for people to navigate when they're post bankruptcy. How do I get my life back on track? How do I get credit again? How do I, you know, how it, it is credit something that I should do? How do I live my life without credit? So, you know, there's a, a ton of information that they need post divorce that bankruptcy attorneys, they just give you access to something that they're required to provide access to. So, you, you know, you get your certified that you took this, you know, credit counseling course and you're done. But that's that's a joke. And, and really what they need is handholding. How do you handhold them in that process? So um, I love talking about this out loud because this gives us an opportunity to start to open people's minds. And one of the things you shared with me in the beginning before we started recording. Right. So in, in our in our green room before we started this interview is the fact that um, many attorneys and I want to be careful not to offend anybody who's not in this camp, but many attorneys have a very, very narrow view of what's possible. And maybe you can talk to that a little bit as an attorney of, of what that's like. Um, but what I want to do is I just want to start introducing these little seeds of ideas of how you might be able to use this in your practice. Well, it's, it's not to insult attorneys. It's not their fault. It's not our, it's not our fault. We are taught Oh, and, and reinforce, you know, that, that our view of the world is just, you know, the, the top of a pin. And that's all we see. And generally, that's, those are the people that we associate with. That's our entire world. And we don't even know this other world exists out there. And I thought that I had done a lot of research on business. And I thought, and, and quite frankly, I even looking back when I first started my practice, I knew a lot more, or at least I practiced a lot more business mind and growth mind than any attorney I knew. And I still knew nothing. And it wasn't until I started writing and getting exposed to a completely different uh, set of people, business people, that I even knew that this existed. And then I started it's like layers of an onion, you know, you start peeling back and peeling back and then you start getting creative. Uh, but it's very scary. And it's, you have to work through that fear because you're an attorney. Our whole gig is fear based. Our whole gig is not stepping foot outside those lines. And we don't want to be ridiculed. We, we don't want to be criticized. Uh, so it's, you have to work through that as well. To, to get there. Uh, but once you do, it, it's amazing what you can do. And it's needed. People need this information. People need this help. Uh, estate planning, there are so many people in the world who have no idea why proper estate planning is necessary, even when they have had an attorney do their estate plan. Uh, I can't tell you how many times I was dismayed when I saw someone's professionally done estate plan that had holes in it that were massive, massive. And they didn't know. Uh, that's another great information product there. Um, and, and people need it. Absolutely. Yeah. And I love how you, you said it, you know, it's like peeling layers of an onion and you just got to keep, you got to keep at it, keep peeling off layer by layer. You know, it, it's not like ripping off a mandate. You can't just, there's no get rich quick scheme here. There's no quick fix. You, you have to slowly start to dip your toe in the water and feel around and see, and, and, you know, see the possibility. But one of the things that I want to, I want to share, and maybe you can share with, with us, um, there is a totally different um, possibility as far as outcome with your client when you're involved with an information product versus representing them. And that's when your client sees something that they didn't see before. They suddenly have this aha moment. They, they, you know, they, there's something, a transformation that happens that you effectuated or you helped to cause by educating them in a certain way, by bringing them to light. Have you experienced that with your client and try to describe, well, let's first ask, have you experienced that with your clients where somebody just had this like massive, you know, moment of clarity and all of a sudden like 
the heavens open for them. Like they're, now they're suddenly able to, to march along and, and get to where they wanted to go. It is the most incredible feeling. Um, and and the, the closest thing I can describe it to is, is you know, that, that verdict that you get in a, like a horrible child custody case where you walk out and you know you just saved that kid's life, literally. It's that great of a feeling. Uh, and when I started this, I thought that about 95% of it would be teaching the tools of flat fees and about, you know, 5, 10% mindset. And it, very quickly, I learned that that was completely opposite, the, the opposite. And when I can help someone see the possibility in themselves and see what they're actually capable of, and start to take the steps to reach that, it is, it is humbling. It, it brings tears to my eyes on a weekly basis. When I see someone who is struggling and, and not just struggling financially, when you know that you're smart, you know you're capable and you're making 60 grand a year and you're in debt or you're making even 200 a year but your life is crazy and you know it could be different and you don't know how it the word that comes up with people that i hear the most is i feel like a fraud i feel like a failure because you're projecting this i'm a successful attorney i have my act together I'm telling you what to do with your life. In the meantime, I've got a tax problem. In the meantime, I, you know, I, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to pay the bills. I'm not happy. My, I mean, it's just a mess. Absolutely. It's a mess. So when I can help someone, um, and there are a lot of attorneys who are in that camp, it, it is the most incredible feeling I've ever had. Yeah, it's 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 truly. I mean, I, I, it, you know, not not to not to go with the drug route, but it, it's like crack. Like once you, once you experience it once, you suddenly feel like you need to experience it again because it is so validating and freeing to know that you have helped alter this person's trajectory permanently of where they were going, um, and you can do that. At, no matter what your practice area, no matter what your information product is, there's going to be somebody because at the end of the day, what an information product does is it's not it, you're not teaching, but you're helping somebody discover a part of them that they didn't know was there. And it sounds deep and it sounds philosophical, but the reality is, is that you're going to you're going to be effectuating change in people's lives, whether it's a minor change or a big change. Uh, it's going to be something that that they're going to remember forever. And it's a totally different relationship than the one that you have when you're representing them. Uh, and and to to rob yourself of that possibility, I think, is, you know, um, it's just it, it's just taking away you know another experience that you can have in life uh and and there's no reason not to do it like the risk is so low like what if you take my take my word for it and you go down this road and you 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 try an information product or you try a series of information products and it just doesn't work for you like what's the worst that can happen you invested a little bit of time and a little bit of money in it and it didn't work out for you but the possibilities are endless as far as what it can do for you. I mean, this can literally triple, quadruple the income, the revenue stream of your practice by capturing clients that would have never become clients, by serving clients earlier in the journey, by which then is going to make them more likely to become clients down the road. Uh, there's, you know, serving clients post servicing them. The possibilities are, are li literally endless as far as what you can do with this. And if you position it well and position it right, it's going to increase. I'm going to throw a, a, a term at you that is never talked about in the legal industry, but it's going to increase the lifetime value of your client. And that is a business term that you should start to become familiar with because you're going to, you're going to spend X amount of dollars to get a client through the door. You're going to spend money on marketing. You're going to spend money on personnel to get somebody to become a client. 
that cost is going to be fixed. And your ability to pay that over and over and over again to bring in more clients is what's going to allow you to build and scale your firm. If you can figure out how to make more and more money from that client that you're bringing through the door that's costing you the same amount, no matter what you're bringing them through the door for, it, as a matter of fact, if you bring them in early enough in the journey, it might even cost you less to bring them through the door. But let's not even go there. Let's say it costs the same. You're going to significantly change the math of your practice. And instead of you needing to have your attorneys, you know, bill at 140 hours a, a, a month to be profitable, you're going to be able to completely change the script on how you do that. Uh, you can implement flat fee pricing and you can have your information products and have everything running as a machine that's going to significantly increase your profitability. So I love, I love this idea. I love the concept and I love that you're doing this. I want to just share when it comes to flat fee pricing, uh, folks, we have um, podcast episodes. It's almost a year since we did them. Uh, episode 26 and episode 27. 26 is the death of the billable hour, and 27 is the anatomy of flat fee pricing. I invite you to go listen to that. That's, those are my opinions and, and my navigation of how you can think about flat fee pricing. But Brita is, <laughs> is the expert here, um, knows way more about it than I do. Uh, so definitely check out her book, The Happier Attorney, to implement that in your practice. Uh, so Brita, um, any uh, words of advice that you want to give to somebody who's, they're listening to this and they're opening their mind, they're starting to think about the possibilities. What do you want to tell that person in the position you're in now uh, versus where they're sitting, which is a position you've been in in the past? I would tell them, again, you have to shut off your attorney brain and your attorney brain uh, most likely is going to say a, a few things. Number one, you know, I can't do that. Well, that's not true. Uh, when you start looking at some of the other people that are doing it, I looked at them, I'm like, okay, I'm just as smart, if not smarter than they are. Um, I have more information to give. There's nothing special about them. There's no reason I couldn't do that. Uh, I would also look at and say, well, you know, people already have written books. Well, so what? So what? They haven't written, I haven't written them. My voice is very different than their voice. My experience is different from their experience. My personality is different. I have a very strong personality. I have no problem telling people what's what. And a lot of people need that. So maybe your population, you know, isn't the main population, but your population still needs to hear it from your voice. So I don't care if a thousand other people have written a book on estate planning or have a course on estate planning. They don't have your experience because it's you. So don't let that thwart you. Don't let that scare you. Uh, the other thing is who cares what other attorneys think? That was a big one for me. It was so scary to write an, a book for attorneys knowing how brutal they can be in their judgment on a subject that is saying everything we've been doing for the last 70 years is wrong, by the way, and stupid and crazy. Um, and I, at the beginning, I did get some flack and did get some hate. And that was jarring. Uh, but I, I knew what my product is. I knew how good it was. And I kept going forward and now it doesn't bother me. Now, you know, say whatever you want. Um, I, I know what I'm doing and it's ethical and um, I'm fine with it. But it was jarring at the beginning and it was hard to have a spotlight on me. Um, but you, you move through that and you think that you, you keep coming back to what you're doing and your why. Why are you doing this? And those other people who are criticizing, they have their own issues. They're criticizing you for their own issues, not because of what you're doing. As, of course, assuming what you're doing is ethical and, you know, um, solid. Uh, but all of the fear, you, you have to just put that aside. And all of the what is. And don't expect it to be instant. You know, th there's a whole learning curve. This is a whole new gift. And you're, you're going to have to invest a lot of time. You're going to have to invest some money. You don't know how to do this. I didn't know how to do this. 
Um, you have to hire people who know what they're doing to help you. Um, don't try and be an attorney and don't try and be, do this on the cheap. Um, I know you're smart. You don't know what you're doing with this. So hire help to do this. Um, but if you stick with it and you're consistent, it, it can be a game changer. Yeah, absolutely. So Brita, how do people take the next step with you? If they resonated with you, they want to check your book out. What, you know, what's, what's the best thing that they can do right now to engage with you? Well, the, the book is on Amazon uh, and we have a Facebook group, attorneys and flat fees that uh, if you are an attorney, you have to verify that you're an attorney or uh, a law student. Uh, you can join and uh, then you can work with me privately as well by just private messaging me on Facebook. Awesome. So folks, we're going to link that book up in the show notes. So in your podcast player it should be right below the description, uh, a link to the book on Amazon. You just click that. It should open up your Amazon app and you should be able to purchase this before I even finish my sentence. Um, check out the book, The Happier Attorney. Rita, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for joining me. And uh, I definitely look forward to future conversations. I don't think that we're even close to finished talking about this. I wanted to bring you on to highlight the information product side, but I think that uh, there's a lot that we can do talk about and go into when it comes to flat fee pricing and, and how to navigate that uh, and what kind of a change that can do to your practice, um, especially in family law, estate planning law, a lot of the, the, the areas where um, there's a lot of money being left on the table because of inefficiencies and um, and and just like you said, the adversarial relationship with a client when it comes to, uh, you know, how how do we work, uh, you know, and it's in your best interest. You know, it, it, talk about talk about the 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 biggest um, ethics violation of all. It's in your best interest to not solve your client's problem because you can bill more time. So it removes that conflict that's so glaring and obvious, um, but nobody talks about. And, and it just completely eliminates that from, from the discussion because they know up front what it's going to cost them. It's in your best interest to make it take as little time as possible so you can profit as much as possible. Um, and it just completely changes the game. So uh, love the, the torch that you're holding and, and you know the message that you have to share. Uh, and I, I didn't know about your book before we met, so I'm looking forward to checking it out myself and perhaps having a, 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 a second round with you at some point to talk go deeper into... Uh, flat fee pricing. But I appreciate your time and I appreciate you being here. Thank you. That's it for this week's episode of Profit With Law. If you have enjoyed the show, please consider sharing it with at least one person. Imagine how many lives we can change if we each shared this episode. Another way to share the episode is on social media. We appreciate your support and look forward to you joining us again next week.